Yet, despite its grandeur, the Great Bear didn't quite live up to expectations. The long boiler barrel and tube lengths led to inefficiencies in steam generation. Worse still, the trailing axle boxes overheated frequently due to their proximity to the firebox. Churchwood tried to resolve these issues in 1913 by enhancing the superheater and fitting a top feed apparatus, but with limited success. Then came the First World War. Development of the Great Bear ceased, while the Star Class continued to perform admirably. And another problem loomed. Weight. With an axle load of 20 long tons, the Great Bear could only operate on select parts of the GWR network, chiefly the Paddington to Bristol mainline. This severely restricted its usefulness. Nonetheless, the locomotive remained a flagship of the company until Churchwood's retirement in 1922. But the writing was on the wall. In 1923, the Newcastle class arrived, lighter, more powerful, and vastly more practical. By January 1924, the Great Bear was due for heavy repairs. Instead of investing in an overhaul, Churchwood's successor, Charles Collett, chose to rebuild it. After covering just 527,000 miles, it was quietly withdrawn. Some components lived on. The front frames and number plates were reused. Rebuilt as a Castle Class 460 and renamed Viscount Churchill, the Great Bear was no more. Its unique Pacific wheel arrangement was never revisited by GWR. Though visually impressive, the locomotive was ultimately seen as a failure. C.J. Allen, a respected railway writer, called it one of the rare Swindon products deserving that label.